All right, we are on John 16. Do we have all of our scriptures? Or nothing left on the tray? Okay, so that's great. Um, so John 16, we're going to read verse, starting with verse 4 through verse 15. So if you've got that passage starting with verse 4, let's go ahead and read uh, through that passage in John 16. Last month, and these are going to be true, that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For I, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, I don't know if he will hear me. The world concerning it's sin cool. and righteousness oh, and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. They might hear me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will send me, see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Is that starting with verse 12? Oh, I got that. Right. I'm not sure where my Bible is so different. Than oh, that. Yeah, that could happen. <laughs> I, have, I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will, will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to, to the father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. All right, thank you. So question one says, in what ways is it to our advantage that Jesus ascended into heaven instead of staying on earth after his resurrection? That's what Jesus says in verse seven. It's to your advantage that I go. In what ways is it to our advantage? So he has to go so the comforter can come. Okay. So why is that to our advantage? Why wouldn't we rather have Jesus here? <laughs> well, that's a good question. <laughs> well, he can only be in one place at one time at that point. Okay. But the spirit can be everywhere. Yes. Okay. And so that's the we one that. thing. <laughs> we did it. That's <laughs> kind of straightforward is while Jesus was here, he limited himself to his physical presence. And so, you know, only the people that were with him could experience his presence. Now the Holy Spirit has come. He is in every believer, omnipresent, and so that's to our advantage. What else would be to our advantage that Jesus ascended into heaven instead of staying on earth? Well, would people have tried to make him a king? I mean, it would have not been the right kind of kingdom. Yeah, yeah. And so Jesus, what he needed to do had to happen this way, for sure. Yeah. I think he would have heard his balls. Okay. Yeah. In, in heaven, wouldn't he be our advocate? Okay. Yes. And so that was part of, you know, not only his death and his resurrection had to happen, but his ascension to the right hand of God so that he could be that advocate, that intercessor, the one, you know, where we come and confess our sins to God. God can say, you're forgiven because the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is right there with him. And so that piece of it is, you know, that completion of the work of salvation is to our advantage. I wonder, too, if the disciples would not have taken their role as leaders and mm -hmm. if, if Jesus had been there. Yeah. That, you know, that they maybe wouldn't have be. been as, I don't know, 
and and you know that plays into the you know god had a plan mm -hmm. for yeah. the church yeah. and the church age and that plan was you know now the holy spirit would be the person of the trinity that is involved and active and working here on earth and so jesus ascending into heaven sending the holy spirit was part of that the church becoming what it was intended to be that's yeah. what are some of the things that the holy spirit does for believers that you know it's good that the holy spirit has come versus jesus just staying here in person what are some of the things the holy spirit does for believers convicts of sin yes. yeah you know in that part of the passage is here uh, I don't know. very That's strongly the spirit is the one who brings conviction so that we the website and that's not turn to god for salvation to open the scripture yes you know the holy spirit is the spirit of truth who will guide you into all truth who speaks yeah. jesus word to us so we understand yeah any other things that the Holy Spirit does? I think he gives us words to speak when we're witnessing. Yeah. There it is. There. Well. All of a sudden, I said something that I might not even remember. Mm -hmm. but someone tells yeah. me they it's touched their life. Sure. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's sort of amazing how that happens. Yeah. I see, I don't know if that's right. Well, there, yeah. But, overwhelming that you're used to. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's part of the Holy Spirit's work. It's to our advantage. Jesus ascended into heaven, sent the Holy Spirit, because that's part of what the Spirit does, is he empowers us and gives us the words to say, moves in our minds and our hearts uh, to connect with people. Yeah. I think of the 12 disciples before, you know, they were running <laughs> heading for the hills but after the holy spirit came they are strong and yeah know what to say yeah and that you know part of the holy spirit's work we talk about he is one who transforms us you know changes us and he's still doing that same kind of work today yeah so just you know just recognizing that you know, it is to our advantage. That was God's plan. All of these things that we have today because of God moving forward with that plan and sending the Holy Spirit. So question two, look at as many other versions of John 16, 7 as you can. What are the various ways the word helper, and that's the ESV translation, what are the various ways the words helper is translated? How does this help us understand the meaning of this word? What are some of the other translations of that word helper in verse Advocate. seven? Advocate, yep. Yeah. Counselor. Counselor. Comforter. Comforter. Any others? Those are probably the main ones. Um the message paraphrase has the friend. Oh. Oh. Um, and it could be translated intercessor, strengthener, um, you know, all of those things are possible. The, the Greek word there is the word paraclete, as we say it in English, literally one who is called alongside to help. And one of the things that I think is interesting about this is, in this context, we aren't the ones that call the Holy Spirit alongside of us to help us. God, the Father, and Jesus are the one who calls the Holy Spirit to go and be by, by us. He's, they send the Holy Spirit to us. He's called by the Father. He's called by the Son. It's not us doing it. It's God's work to bring the Holy Spirit to us. It's funny. In this version, they have the helper, and then they put in parentheses. Comforter, advocate, intercessor, yes. counselor, strengthener, and standby. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, you got a good answer. Yeah. 
And, and like I say, it's a, it's a word that ha can have all kinds of meanings. You know, it's a very broad word. And really all of those things apply to the work of the Holy Spirit today. So, question three, read John 14, 16. Why did Jesus say he would ask for another helper? Who was the original helper? Compare how the word is used in 1 John 2, 1. So John 14, 16, again, Jesus is, this is still part of his upper room discourse, the message he gave to his disciples just before he was going to Gethsemane. Um, and here he says, towards the beginning of this talk with them, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. So why did Jesus say he would ask for another helper who was the original helper? Yeah, yeah. And if you look at, at 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, it's a good um, passage to keep in mind when you talk about the Holy Spirit and this uh, word that is used to describe him, helper. ESV. So 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, John writing to the Christians 60 years after Jesus says, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So that word advocate in 1 John 2, 1 is the same word in the original as Jesus used to describe the Holy Spirit in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16. And so the Holy Spirit is another one. And like I said uh, about a month ago in this sermon, uh, you know, the, that word in the original language for another, there's two different words for another in Greek. One of them is another of the same kind or another of a, of a different kind. And here, Jesus uses the word that means of the same kind, another one just like him. And so, can you, can you think of any works, any thing that the Holy Spirit does that the Bible also says Jesus does? Something Jesus does that the Bible says the Holy Spirit does that too. Something the Holy Spirit does, the Bible says Jesus does that too. Can you think of anything that from the New Testament that, that fits that picture? There's some familiar things, but I don't know if they'll come to your mind off the top of your head. Is it teacher? called teacher? Okay. Oh, and the Holy Spirit teacher. certainly works as a yeah, teacher here. Yeah. yeah? What about that, you know, in prayer, Jesus is, you know, kind of our intercessor mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit does the groaning with the words intercedes for yeah. us with groans that words yeah. cannot express. So uh, Hebrews 7.25 tells us Jesus is praying for us. He's our intercessor. Romans 8 verse 26 says the Holy Spirit is our intercessor. Um, you know, so there, there's a number of ways that it's the same work that the Holy Spirit does that Jesus does. And so Jesus says, I'm sending you another one, just like me, who is going to do this work. You know, I really think Jesus was a comforter, too, when he was here. Mm -hmm. You know, he wept when Lazarus died. And, and you know, he, he just mm -hmm. loved the children and loved people. and. Um, so in a lot of ways, he was a comforter. Yeah, sort of yeah. like that. Except since you bring that up, uh oh, <laughs> I have to have to tell you the story of that word comforter. Because what do you think of when you think of a comforter? What's a comforter? That's a blanket. Yeah, you know this Cozy whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 warm. But when, you know, and that's the word that's used in the King James Version to translate this word is comforter. So it's kind of in our minds, traditional way to understand this word. But when the King James was translated in 1617, that word comforter 
didn't have the same meaning right. as it does for us today. Yeah. You know, and you think about the word comforter, or comfort. The first part of the word, C-O-M, is a preposition that simply means with, to be with. And then the second half of the word is the word fort. And so in their minds, the comforter was not this warm blanket you wrap around yourself and feel good. The comforter was a fort that is with you and around you and supporting you. You know, wow. it was much more a strong, powerful figure than the soft blanket. Mm -hmm. It was yourself. more like a protector. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, uh, so I, one of the things I, especially when you say comforter, protector might be a little bit more of a, uh, you know, a, a way to look at it too. But when you say you're convicted, you know, mm -hmm. when you're convicted, you don't feel really good. Right. Right, you yeah. you definitely when you're convicted, yeah. you feel lousy about yes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, when he sometimes, you know, when, when yeah. he's working, <laughs> it doesn't feel very comfortable. No, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, yeah. And and you know that's part part of the you know what I think is just a great blessing from this word. You know, Jesus using this word is that it is so broad and. You know, it shows all these all these different aspects of the spirit's work fit with this work, and so it's it's helpful that way. Um, and I think I said this in the sermon a few weeks ago. You know, one of the ways this word was commonly used was in the context of the courtroom, and so that word advocate fits in some context, but. The place, most of the places that it's used in the Bible in that setting, the advocate is like the defense attorney. You're on trial, and the Holy Spirit comes to defend you in the trial to fight off the accusations of Satan. But in this context, in John 16, the comforter isn't the defense attorney, the comforter is the prosecuting attorney. And he's bringing the charges against you. From God's law to help us to wake up and confess our sin and turn to God. And, and the word can cover both of those things. All right. So, question four What is the name given to the Holy Spirit in John 16, 13? It's also in 14, 17. So what's the name? Give it to the Holy Spirit there. Spirit of truth. Okay, yes. spirit of truth. So what meaning and purpose does that title suggest to you? That the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. That's going to show us the error of our way. Okay. I mean, this is, I yeah. mean, you may be doing this and think it's right, but it's not. Okay. But, yeah. but you know, being, what do you say? Telling us the truth, yeah, then we yeah. know that it's not, yeah, and so that aspect of it certainly yeah. comes through, yeah. Other ways that that title, that title helps us understand, appreciate the work of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Trust it, yes. Oh, okay, yes. So, what what are you think? What do you think of when you are saying that we can trust? Well, spirit. you know, today, you just can't uh, trust yeah, anybody. Yes, <laughs> yes. And so that aspect of it yeah. is really important. We, yeah. we yeah. struggle today yes. to know what yeah. is true. Yes. You know, what is true? Excuse me, what is false? There's so many voices out there, and, you know, all of them claiming that they're authoritative. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we know? And we need to seek the help of the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. You know, that's an aspect of his work. Any other things that that title helps us with, suggests to us, the spirit of truth? He says he'll guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. And I think of the verse, uh, you'll know the truth and the truth will yeah. set you free. And that's how, we're, how we come to know the Lord. Yes. Like, yeah, very definitely. to believe in that truth. Yeah. Um, 
you know, the, the catechism talking about the work of the Holy Spirit talks about, you know, the Holy Spirit calls, enlightens, gathers, sanctifies. You know, the Holy Spirit is the one who calls us, that sends that truth to our minds and our hearts. He enlightens us so we can see it and understand it. He gathers us in. And then he brings about that work of regeneration in our hearts. So all of that is certainly part of this picture of the spirit of truth. I think of the verse about John 14, 6, I think. Oh, yeah. Christ yes. says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Yes. No one comes to the Father but through me. And it just seems like there's a connection between Christ and the spirit. Right? Yes, very That's definitely. Right. Very definitely. Those two verses in the same talk of, that Jesus gives. Yeah. You know, I am the truth. I'm going to send the spirit of truth to you. Yeah. And, and, and we need to remember, and part of the work of the Holy Spirit is, was inspiring the authors to write the New Testament, the whole Bible. Yeah. And so here the is the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're searching for the truth, what is true and what is false? You know, this is what we can be sure of. You know, we know this is true because the spirit of truth is the one who inspired it. So we're going to, you know, we've got a lot of other material to talk about here in this study. Um, talking about the Holy Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, different aspects of that, who the Holy Spirit is. But want this also to be especially kind of a wide open discussion. Um, and so before we jump into those things, do you have any questions, thoughts, comments, Bible passages that you are going, what's this all about? How do we understand the Holy Spirit's work in this area? What you know, I hear this talk about the Holy Spirit elsewhere. What do we believe about that? Um, are there things that you have on your mind uh, that we could talk about together, look at God's word together on before we keep going here? Because we want this to be, you know, what, what you have on your mind, uh, questions and comments that you have. I was listening to a sermon on this and and one thing he pointed out was that the holy spirit is not an it yes the holy spirit is a person he yes the third person of the trinity yeah, yeah. and so that to me that means we can communicate yeah. with the holy spirit yeah as well. yes with jesus yeah wow. yeah that's so interesting because just in the last year or two that clicked in my head too and so in my prayers I will pray to the Holy Spirit too. Mm -hmm. And it still is kind of uncomfortable because mm -hmm. I'm not used to it. And yet there's so much work that the Holy Spirit does that I want him to do. Sure. And so I've been doing that more. Yeah. And that is a really important point that we need to make sure that we've got straight in our minds is yeah. that we're talking about when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about the third person of the Trinity. We're not talking about a thing or an it or a power or you know any of those things. We're talking he about the person. The yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he didn't just come on Pentecost. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Very definitely. Um, what? The Old Testament. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I. When I think about the Holy Spirit and uh, to think about him as almost integrated into us, mm -hmm. where I think of Jesus for some reason as a separate person, <laughs> it, it's just almost as if, you know, it's like it, he's integrated into us. Yeah. And, and Jesus is separate. I, it, that's how I think of him. And I don't know why, if that's with other people too. Or... You know, I think, I think we are challenged because of that language, you know, spirit, you know, what is the spirit? 
And, you know, like I can, I can talk about, well, in my spirit, I think this or feel this. I'm talking about me, not somebody else, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? And so that kind of language, I think, makes it hard for us to wrap our heads around this. The Holy Spirit is a person the same way that the God the Father and God the Son are a person. And yet we do, you know, the Bible does talk about the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and filling us and empowering us and, you know, you all know, of those things too. What yeah. verse that is? Which verse? That Which? you're just talking about where the Holy Spirit dwells us. <clears throat> Can I? What was it, Mary? First Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Yeah. Where were the temple he and where the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, do you not know that yeah. your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, yeah. whom you have from God, or and some versions I think say who dwells in you? Um, and so that's one of the places where it talks about the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find it. Because there is, is a verse in this context in John that talks about the Spirit dwelling in you. You know that you're a child of God. Yeah, and that, that verse That's the one is in Romans chapter 8. Now, Romans chapter 8. Um, Yeah. You no, know, verse nine. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, well, the body is dead because of sin; the spirit is alive because of righteousness. And the end of verse eleven. You know, give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Yeah. You know, I think another reason why it's hard for us to think correctly of, of the Holy Spirit is in the New Testament, every time we see reference to him, a lot of times in stories, he came in the form of a dove. Yeah. You know, he descended. We have that picture in our minds, yes. Yeah. And yeah. He, yeah, Jesus and God, we had more of a man form, right? Whereas, yeah, the dove, I think, yeah. kind of throws me that way. Yep. yep. I think often the prayers as they go up, praying to God, mm -hmm. praying to Jesus, yep. it wasn't. I never a heard a lot of prayer. Mm -hmm. yep. to the Holy Spirit, and I've questioned that over the years, and then. Sort of in my mind now, and, you know, listening to the discussion, it's like it's a we should yes. be doing that. Yes. Yeah. That's why I say just the last couple of years yeah. that I've been doing that. And is it because people are scared of uh, some of the cults that get carried away with? Yes. Um, yeah, that colors our mm -hmm. approach to it. Is mm -hmm. some people have gone off the deep end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, with the Holy Spirit. And so I got to stay away from that yeah. so that I react this way. Yes. In your sermon a week or two ago, you talked about the Spirit. And I was thinking, this is the verse I was thinking of, for all who are led by the Spirit mm -hmm. of God are sons of God. Mm -hmm. And in your sermon, I think I took it being led by the spirit of god means you're in your bible yeah yeah that certainly is a part of that picture okay. yep i mean because the holy spirit inspired the bible he's the spirit of truth you know he you know in in what we read tonight you know he will guide you into all truth and that is especially through the word of god um you know part of it you know, and, and why we don't emphasize or pray to the Spirit more is, 
Uh, let's see if I can find that question. Yeah, question 11. What should we expect to be the results and focus of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, according to John 16, verses 13 to 15? Look at those verses. What should be the result or focus of the ministry of the Holy Spirit? John 16, verses 13 to 15. What is the Holy Spirit going to do, according to Jesus? Guide you. Yeah. And what will be the result of that? How will he do that? By, by disclosing and taking what Jesus had already said mm -hmm. and done. Yeah. Yes. And let it get helping us to know that. Yes. And so the Holy Spirit's work is not to bring attention to himself, mm -hmm. but to bring attention to Jesus. And so if the Holy Spirit is working, Jesus is the one that's going to be in focus. You know, and so that, you know, mm -hmm. if we're like, oh, I'm not seeing the Holy Spirit enough. Well, if we're seeing Jesus, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is doing the work. And so that's a piece of it too. You know, and you know, I think it's true today that you know we can tend to kind of shy away from the Holy Spirit or not really seek to understand the Spirit or dig into what the Bible says about the Spirit. And that's not what we should do either. Um, sometimes we need to focus on the Holy Spirit because we've neglected him and that teaching. But, you know, the end result, you know, verse 14 of John 16, Jesus says, he will glorify me. Mm -hmm. You know, and so Jesus is being glorified, the Holy Spirit's work. So do we say different prayers? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, we pray to Jesus, so that's that type of prayer. And, and I mean, Jesus and God, they're the same prayer. Would you say a different type of request or prayer? That I do. Holy Spirit? I do. My when I pray to the Holy Spirit, this this is what I pray. I've been praying this for so long now. Holy Spirit, spread across our land and convict us of our sin and help us and help others to get to know Jesus. So more of a universal prayer versus a specific prayer. Well, but but you know what, what I'm does, hearing, yeah, yeah what is he does. you go just Here's these verses that say that this, this is, is what, what the Holy Spirit yeah, does. Yeah. And so I'm going to directly ask the Holy Spirit yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, not because you can't pray that same prayer to Jesus right. or right. to the Father. Right. But, you know, that's what the Bible right. says the Spirit does. So I'm going to ask the Spirit directly to do that thing. Yeah. Or when I'm reading scripture, Holy Spirit, help me yes. to understand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so the prayer is focused on the Holy Spirit because those are things that the Bible directly says the Holy yes. Spirit does. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with praying to the Father or to the Son or to the Holy Spirit. Right. You know, they're all God. They're yes. all, they're united. They're not going to. I feel bad you're praying to the spirit. I'm just going to be jealous. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, and so don't need to have yeah. those kind of things yeah. going in our mind. That's true. You know, the, you know, general practice, the norm that we see in scripture is the prayers are addressed to the father. You know, that's, that's what Jesus taught us. Yeah. That's, you know, kind of the general normal thing, but then you have, the disciples sometimes praying to Jesus, you know, so you have examples of that happening, but then, you know, the Holy Spirit is God too. And so that can be done too. There's no limit on those things. I'm going to bring up a, maybe a kettle of worms <laughs> because in that same sermon, I found myself wondering then it, I, I believe the Holy Spirit does lead and guide us through his word. But can there be times when we're not reading the Bible that we just sense the Holy Spirit telling us something? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The Holy Spirit I think is we would have learned it at an earlier time. And this is a refresher. Well, and, and, you know, yes, I think that's right. Yes. That, I mean, it's something we already know, but at this moment, 
you need to remember this. And that's what the spirit would do. And, you know, maybe it's, you need to apply this okay. in this way. Okay. You know, the Holy Spirit is guiding us in that way. Yeah. Um, you know, that whole thing is a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. how do we understand God's work speaking to us and guiding us, you know, in specific ways. In our everyday life. Yeah, in our everyday life, you know, where there's not a Bible verse that says, Jim, go and talk to so-and-so today. You know, but it, it's just not in there. I don't know why. But... Oh, it would be so helpful. But, you know, we believe the Holy Spirit can guide us to, you know, say, mm -hmm. I need to go and talk to that person today. You know? But there's a, I don't know if I want to say a limit to how to do Yes, there yeah. is. I don't remember where I heard the story of this woman who went to this man and said the Holy Spirit told me to marry you. Yes. Yeah, that was in that sermon. Was that in it? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. There's lots of those stories. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Okay. That was that. <laughs> there's so lots of quite those, though. There, there's, yeah, it's nice to know you're being the same. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I don't know where I am. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I, I know there are certain fruits of the Holy Spirit. Yes. In my training, and again, some of my training, it's you know, Catholic background. It, it was the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom, counsel, fortitude, piety, mm -hmm. and fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that was reinforced mm -hmm. a lot. And I, mm -hmm. I keep looking for it, and I'm not finding mm -hmm. it. Was that so something cool. maybe that was just put together by some folks who are just saying, this is what we think, this is all That's summing up? It would be interesting to yeah. try to look at you know, those specific things and see if you could find a passage of scripture where it connects that thing specifically to the spirit. Because it could easily be that there are scripture passages that do that. I mean, all of those They're things are obviously good. And, yeah, yeah, you know, and, and yeah. God's work in us. So, but I, I, I don't know, you yeah, know off I the top of my head where no, that totally comes from. Alien, uh, to Diane when I'm talking to her about sure. that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that phrase, the fruit of the spirit being tied to those specific things. Yeah. You no, know, that wasn't, yeah. For or gifts. gifts. It was, this was the oh, gifts, the gifts, of, the gifts of the spirit. spirit. Yeah. And not the fruit. That, it was oh. the gifts of that the spirit. too. You know, the gifts of the spirit so being tied to those specific things. things. So these pray for from the yeah. Holy Spirit. Oh. Here's, yeah. here's Galatians 5. That's, That's the fruit though. But the fruit of the spirit yeah. is love, joy, peace, right. patience, yeah. kindness. And that goodness. was something separate. Right. And that's and separate. Yeah. This was yeah. the gifts. Huh. But, you know, the gifts are listed in yes. a couple of places in yeah. scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, in Romans chapter 12, mm -hmm. um, you know, it talks about um, it's starting in verse 6, Romans 12, 6. Uh, having gifts that differ according to grace given to us, let us use them. There's prophecy, according to our faith, there's service, and teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, acts of mercy. You know, so there's a list yeah, of gifts of the Spirit. And then again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, <laughs> Paul lists a bunch of gifts, um, starting in verse. 8, First Corinthians 12, 8, where one is given through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, another the utterance of knowledge, yep. another faith, another healing, another working miracles, another prophecy, another distinguishing of spirits, another various kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. And there's a few other places where there's a few other gifts that are mentioned. But, you know, that phrase, gifts of the Spirit, we would normally tie it to these yeah. specific scripture passages mm -hmm. and like i say you know all of those things it might be that there are verses that connect those specific things to the holy spirit but i'm not, i don't yeah we're picking up it's parts of them right each place yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah um want to want to address that uh what you mentioned lauren since we do have a question about that here 
I think we might as well address that now. Um, so if you look at question 10, is the Holy Spirit to be understood as a person in the same sense that the Father, as the Father and the Son are persons? How would you respond to someone who claimed that the Holy Spirit is only the personality or the inner being or the underlying force of God in the same sense that we as human beings have a part of us that is our spirit? So how do we know that the Holy Spirit is a person? Um, and well, the Trinity is three. Yes. Yeah. But Trinity is not even in the Bible. I we, we the know word that isn't, way. yeah. But yeah. but the idea of the three yeah. and one. Yeah. Why wouldn't it be a person? Well, because <laughs> yeah. it's a dumb. Yeah, and because we say spirit. Yes. And we're using the term yeah. spirit yeah. when we're talking yeah. about that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things that you could point to is what we read in John 14, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I'll ask the Father, and he will give you another helper mm -hmm. to be with you forever. Another one just like Jesus. Right. Well, Jesus is a person. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is another, yeah. just like him. Well, God, God is another. tells us that, you know, Jesus is a person, so the Spirit is a person. Okay. Another one is John 14, verse 26. Oh, there it is. The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. There are many places in Scripture where the Holy Spirit does things that only a person can do. The Holy Spirit teaches. People teach. You know? Okay. Not things, but people do. And so there's other acts of the Spirit that help us to see that this is a person, not a thing. To me, one of the one of the most powerful arguments for the Holy Spirit as a person is in what we read in John 16, verses 13 and 14. And there's a couple of other places in this upper room discourse where Jesus does the same thing. But in John 16, verses 13 and 14, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth for he will not speak of, on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Verse 13 speaks of the spirit of truth. Okay, That's the title, that's the name that Jesus gives to the spirit in this context. In the Greek language, every noun is assigned a gender. Masculine, feminine, or neuter. That's every noun has a gender. The noun, the word spirit in Greek is neuter. Okay, that's, it's an it. Oh. Spirit is it. Mm -hmm. But in this context, in verse 14, where Jesus says, he will glorify me, Everything. Jesus uses a masculine pronoun. You're not supposed to do that. Mm. Your pronoun should match the gender of the noun that it is. Oh, so wrong. <laughs> and so it's a place where Jesus tells us, yes, we call him the spirit, the Holy Spirit. That's a neuter noun, but he is a he. He's a person. He's not a it. Jesus purposefully changes the pronoun to make the point that the spirit is a person. Now, when we talk about a person, mm -hmm. I think of a human, but we shouldn't think that way. You know, Jesus is God the Son. He is a person. There are three persons of the Trinity. <laughs> you know, and obviously this is a part of the struggle yeah. we have we're talking yeah. about the trinity we're talking about god yeah <clears throat> it is beyond our understanding but god made us in his image and yeah. so yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably what the, the biggest issue with us in our relational understanding is that like jesus said when i'm when i'm gone i can be all places yes. all yeah. times all yeah. people yeah and you know we think of a person as yeah. one yes yeah. contiguous yeah. Yeah, and, and that's the way he was for us. Yeah. 
and helps it, us. And, and it's hard, you know, especially, you know, with Jesus who took on a human yeah, nature, yeah. took on a body, then he died and rose again in a glorified body, but it was still a body that could eat and drink and, you know, walk and whatever. Mm -hmm. But then he ascended into heaven. And now Jesus in that glorified body can also be everywhere present. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> but Jesus is God. Yeah. As well as having a human nature, he has the divine nature. And in his divine nature, he is everywhere present. So all of this is just, it's beyond our yeah. understanding. And so, you know, we struggle to understand the Holy Spirit. And part of that is we just will. Yeah. You know, we okay. can't understand you it. Know, a lot of times um, we don't understand the Holy Spirit. There are certain churches that really dwell on the Holy yes. Spirit. And yes. um, we don't. Yep. And I've often yep. thought, well, should we or shouldn't we? Or, <laughs> I mean, yep. what's, how should that go? Because, yep. um, you know, I myself am just kind of fearful of a lot of the Holy Spirit people. I mean, that just, I've been around a few of them, but I'm just saying, um, they, they, want, they kind of intimidate me and it just makes mm -hmm. me upset because I'm thinking, um, I don't know, I'm just as important as other people are, you know, and it's just like, I don't know how to act with them. That's yeah. the first thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I think, I think we have to, with people, yes. you know, always, you know, we are called to love yeah. them yeah. and care about them and recognize they are people who are loved by God, who Jesus died for, and to recognize that just like me, they're sinners. Too. <laughs> and, you know, they might they struggle do a lot of good with, work. Yeah. You know, I mean, we can understand yeah. that because yeah. the Lord is working yeah. for them, but. Yeah. It's something. Yeah. It, it is, it can be challenging. And like you say, you know, like you said, there are groups in evangelical Christianity yeah. that have gone off the deep end yeah, with the Holy Spirit. And that colors our thinking and our understanding. And sometimes it makes us pull back from or be intimidated by any talk of the Holy Spirit. And we, you know, we shouldn't go that direction either. No, we shouldn't. So yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question that might be off track, but it's in here. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus says in verse 12, I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear. Mm -hmm. Did he come back to that or is this just what he's talking about at the end of the chapter? Or I, I, no, I would he didn't there were things that he didn't go into with the disciples at that time because they couldn't understand it. And those were the things that the Holy Spirit then brought to them, taught them after Pentecost. Yes. And, you know, I mean, the biggest one was here, you know, at this point, they had no clue about Jesus dying on the cross for them and rising again. I mean, it was like, he told them it many times, and they, you know, it just yeah. <laughs> didn't make any sense to them, and they didn't pay any attention to just it. Just kind of went, Shoo. yeah. yeah. But after, weird. when the Holy Spirit came, suddenly this all made sense, yeah. and they were preaching it and teaching it, and doing just like they were supposed to do. And and, and you know, we we'd say, you know, a lot of the details that we get in Paul's letters and the other letters. Right were Jesus, what Jesus wanted to teach them and us, yeah. and he, you know, the Holy Spirit did that. Hmm. So, yeah. I, sometimes I wonder, too, when I you know, said, blessed be those who haven't seen it and still mm -hmm. believe, but mm -hmm. I, when I go back and I look at the actual, what happened in Jesus' life, sometimes I think it's easier for us to believe and maybe that's part of the Holy yes. Spirit. Working. Yes, very doing definitely. that. Yes. And it seemed like people that were with Jesus a lot yeah. was saying, yeah. oh, he's just an ordinary guy. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. We, at least to me, I, it seems like I can relate to him as God. Yes. Um, yes. So much more easily, and maybe that's the Holy Spirit that's part of that old process. Yeah, and I think that that's an example of, you know, Jesus had things to say, but they couldn't get it then. But yes, yes, we, we have a new testament. Now. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, yeah. the whole revelation. So, yes, well, we're going to stop here tonight. Thanks for the great discussion. And you know, we've got a lot more that we can talk about, and we can talk more about questions, comments, thoughts that you guys have about the Holy Spirit and things that the Bible says about the Holy Spirit next time, too. Not next week. But two weeks from now, we'll meet again. But let's pray. Oh, I got a prayer request. I yes. got you. <laughs> Tina Tom said that. Yeah. Surgery, and I forgot to mention it. Yeah, Tina had her second hip surgery, went well, she's home, but recovering and, and start rehab. Yeah. Yes, oh. Martha just sent a text. Oh. She said, This weekend is the Orlando weekend to oh. remember with over a thousand people attending. Mm -hmm. This is David's last training event and he is mostly in charge. Mm -hmm. If you could pray for a smooth event and for people to have open ears and hearts to hear God's plan for their marriage, pray for these couples and for healing for them. Mm -hmm. And she says she's going as a volunteer and she oh, says sure. they're super excited. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. okay, cool with that. Martha Haugen? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to sure, think. Sure. Were they yeah, still yeah, here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for each person that could be here tonight. And Lord, I pray for your blessing as your word continues to work in our hearts and lives. Lord, help us to understand, to believe, and to put into practice these things that we've talked about. May your Holy Spirit continue to guide us into all the truth. Father, I do pray that you would be with Tina. Thank you that she came through her surgery well. Father, I pray that you would help her to be able to uh, rest. Pray that you would help so the pain stays under control and that the healing is happening and, and going well and fast. And I pray that you give her strength and encouragement through the rehab process. And Lord, I do pray for David and Martha and ask that you would continue to bless them and their roles with family life. And we pray especially for the weekend to remember in Orlando this weekend. Lord, may you work in that ministry and use David and Martha in your, your plan, your, your work for them in powerful ways in lives of people. We pray that there would be many uh, lives that would be changed as they hear your word and your plan for marriage. Lord, I thank you for them and their uh, taking up this role of, of ministry, and we pray for your blessing. Lord, be with us as we go from here. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much.